Welcome to our Good Friday uh, mini service or broadcast. Some of us were watching Mel Gibson's film The Passion of the Christ yesterday evening and we had a brief discussion of it on the Zoom before our Compline. It's quite an incredible film, uh, full of violence and yet there's a poignant beauty as we see the flashbacks of Jesus at the Last Supper with his friends and disciples and that same Jesus being tortured and brutalised and crucified and yet among his final words are these words of testimony that it is accomplished. One of the things we've been thinking of yesterday and today is how we benefit personally from Jesus's death, how what he did makes a difference in our lives. And I'm going to read some words now from Luke's Gospel and Luke 23. It's the account of the penitent thief. One of the criminals who was hanged railed at Jesus saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Even in that last moments of that man's life, we see him recognising something about Jesus, that he was not dying for anything he had done, but for something others had done and he puts his trust in him and he receives that incredible assurance of forgiveness and everlasting life. And we're encouraged to put our trust that Jesus' death on the cross was for us in our place, on our behalf, in order to make us right with heaven, in order that we could become children of God. I want to read a poem written by an Irish student I met years and years ago called Sieve Boyle. It's called If Ever Blood Was Shed. If ever blood was shed in love, it was then. When one man, an unspoilt beauty, bore the hurt, pain, sin and death of this world on his shoulders. In meekness and majesty he hung on those wooden beams. Rude nails wrenched into his outstretched arms. Those same outstretched arms reach out always that we might return his grasp and receive him in all his glory. On this Good Friday, we do pause and remember that it was the things we have done as individuals and as a race that meant Jesus had to die. But we also step, step forward from that position and we step forward to receive all that Jesus did for us all that he died to accomplish, and we return his grasp. I'm gonna play a song now called This Is Amazing Grace. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the 
king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? It's a good day to remember all that Jesus has done for us, for you and for me, and to thank him for it. And I'm going to lead us in some prayers now. Lord Jesus, by your wounded feet, direct our paths aright. Lord Jesus, by your nailed hands, move ours to deeds of love. Lord Jesus, by your pierced side, cleanse our desires. Lord Jesus, by your crown of thorns, remove our selfish pride. Lord Jesus, by your silence, shame our complaints. Lord Jesus, by your parched lips, curb our cruel speech. Lord Jesus, by your closing eyes, look on our sin no more. Lord Jesus, by your broken heart, break ours. And I invite you, with your mind's eye, on that scene at Calvary, to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And to conclude, I want to read 
a poem that talks about how it will be on the day when we see God clearly, when we see Jesus for ourselves, and when there's nothing in us that turns away from him, but rather we turn completely towards him. It's called, and that will be heaven. And that will be heaven. And that will be heaven. And that will be heaven at last. The first unclouded seeing. To stand like the sunflower, turned full face to the sun, drenched with light. In the still centre, held. While the circling planets hum with an utter joy. Seeing and knowing at last. In every particle seen and known. And not turning away. Never turning away again.